is ready. So we'll begin by uh, going west again into the city and county of San Francisco. The first offender prostitution program and Tom Szilard and Norma Hoodling are here to speak to us. Norma. Good afternoon. My name is Norma Hotelling, and I'm the co-founder with the San Francisco Police Department and the San Francisco District Attorney's Office of the First Offender Prostitution Program. FOP was created to shift our local government approach to prostitution and aid women and girls. It's a unique collaboration between all of the agencies of the criminal justice system together with the public health and frontline community-based organizations. Every day throughout the United States, girls of color, ages 12 to 17, are lured by, from local high schools by violent pimps. Vulnerable and naive 13 and 14 year old girls who are blonde, blue eyed, white, and very young are brutally and cunningly recruited from schools, streets, and malls of the Midwest and Canada, and they're delivered to major cities all throughout the United States to fill the demand side of prostitution, comprised of men mostly educated, middle and upper class. In prostitution, we witness the fragility of the human mind. We see it brutally manipulated and molded to serve the purposes of perpetrators. Universally, we experience the victims also being blamed and persecuted. Vanessa, who came to us at 18, said, my pimp knocked me out with a baseball bat, but I woke up and he was sewing up my head. He wouldn't even take me to the hospital. How could I get away? He'd kill me first. And besides, he was all I knew. I'd been with him since I was 12. Through FOP, we shed the light on a subject that thrives in darkness, secrecy, silence, and shame. I work with an extraordinarily de dedicated team and I co-founded FOP because nine and a half years ago this month, I was exiting the criminal justice system. I had been going to juvenile halls, jails, mental hospitals, emergency rooms, and drug treatment programs since I was 12. No one ever asked me about my life, about prostitution, about being raped, beaten, or kidnapped. I was just a whore and I was just a criminal. How could I ever get out? No one ever treated me like a person. No one asked me if I hurt or why. Like 57% of our clients, I experienced sexual abuse, including child prostitution. Like 82%, I had been brutally assaulted. Like 82% of our clients, I had been homeless. And most, like most of my clients, I suffered severe symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. And I desperately wanted to get out of prostitution and a life that I didn't even understand. Women and girls like myself, if untreated, cycle endlessly, most often until they die, through medical, mental, social service, and criminal justice systems as high users, and they cost cities billions. San Francisco is the first jurisdiction to ever focus its law enforcement efforts on the demand. FOP has delivered over 1,900 solicitors of prostitutes from the court system to an educational and rehabilitational experience in lieu of criminal prosecution. 98% of the 1,900 men remain arrest free today. These men, the fees collected from these men fund a full range of services to women and girls who are the real victims of prostitution and sexual exploitation. The wraparound services include prevention, early intervention, and crisis care. It includes mentoring programs and therapy provided by a team of pro bono therapists. Treatment is provided, I'm proud to say, to women such as Autumn, our administrative assistant who works for SAGE. She started out as a FOP client, as did Agnes and Lisa, and another woman who is now coordinating the jail services for the Sheriff's Department was also a FOP client. These women's lives matter. They play, pay health care, they pay taxes, they have their own health care, and they're living lives today that are free from abuse. We've been replicated or are in the process of being replicated in 25 jurisdictions, including Europe. In FOP, we measure success in terms of real outcomes and real results. Utilizing the peer empowerment model, former prostitutes provide treatment and support. We achieve very dramatic decreases in trauma, 
depression, recidivism rates, and re-victimization. We see increases on an everyday basis of self-esteem, confidence, and ability to take charge of their lives. They get and keep legal jobs, and then they advance in education, and they recover from drugs. What is harder to measure, but is palpable in the work that we do, is the compassion and the bravery, the courage to survive, the trump triumph of the human spirit. Just imagine what we know to be true. She could be your daughter. We know this, and she could be your daughter. She could be gone, and she could be lost forever. How can you measure that? Questions here, Dot Ridings. Been here before, yes, and we have heard this story, and it's moving again. I want you to know that. I guess the question we, I've always wondered, is you have been such an instrumental part of this program, um, and we all have a, a lifespan. Someday there'll be a program with, with that you're not a part of. Um, how do you how do you measure the ability of a program to survive such a strong initial? beginning with a, a dynamic founder who can speak so well and so personally about it. Um, I think I, I can. Um, and Tim would like to say something also. Um, well, what we're, and I'm really proud of this, is uh, I have a whole team of me back in San Francisco. I have women like myself now that have gotten out of prostitution that work for us, and they are as articulate as I am, and they're as dedicated as I am. And they tell me on an everyday basis that this is their last job. They found their purpose in life. They, they can turn around lives that have been filled with abuse and exploitation, where sometimes they become the perpetrators. And they can live a life now where their lives really have meaning and purpose. We're also doing some work around the country where um, we've met with uh, some organizations here. And we're starting a mentoring program for other programs throughout the United States that are run by prostitute survivors like myself. Mm -hmm. And we also get contacted on a daily basis by survivors that want to start their own agency because they say, the help wasn't there for me as a child, it wasn't there for me as an adult, and I want to make sure that this doesn't happen to other women and girls like myself in the community, and I want to do what you do. So we're, we're starting to work on that. Mr. Slark, could you uh, follow up on uh, those comments by giving us a few uh, numbers about the changes that you've seen, the progress that you've recorded. Sure. <clears throat> I wanted to um, just add to that that it's terrific to have someone like Norma, um, but the program, I think, has shown uh, its ability to really become integrated as standard operating procedure into the system, partly um, by uh, integrating the graduates of the program uh, itself into the system. We have hundreds of women now who've graduated from the program who are working for the sheriff's <laughs> office, working for the probation department, working for the district attorney's office where I work, um, getting jobs uh, through the police department. So they're really becoming uh, integrated into the system themselves and its standard operating procedure. <clears throat> when I became a prosecutor in San Francisco, I prosecuted prostitutes. I prosecuted Johns. Um, this was not the procedure uh, in general that was followed. And now we've really seen um, uh, a, a sort of sea change in the approach of the criminal justice system. I know I talked to prosecutors when I first came in, if you had a rape case, we have 80 rape cases uh, a year reported by prostitutes. It's 60 percent of the rape cases uh, that are reported to the police department in San Francisco. Um, you'd have a prosecutor tell you, well, I've, I've got a rape case, but I have a bad witness. She's a prostitute. Now I have a prosecutor from the work that Norma's done, the work that we've all done. We have prosecutors fighting to get cases where the prostitute is a victim because he knows or she knows that they can educate the jury about how this is a particularly vulnerable victim. It makes our case stronger now because we've come to understand the victimization around prostitution. As far as uh, results of the program, basic results, we've graduated now almost 2,000 men from the customer side of the program. We've had 14 rearrested anywhere in the state of California. So we've run the, uh, the wraps. Um, uh, throughout the state of California, it's an incredible recidivism rate. And it's less than half of 1% recidivism, unheard of in any category of crime. Um, by the way, 60% of the men who attend the class self-report that they do not use condoms with their wives or primary sexual partners. 
So there's a whole secondary uh, victim population that we don't look at directly through our program, but that's the families and the primary sexual partners of uh, the men who solicit prostitutes. They're getting incredible benefits through this program uh, by having their partners uh, cease to solicit prostitutes and cease to, uh, to bring the risk of sexually transmitted diseases home. Um, we've served uh, 1,850 girls, 6,400 women. We've graduated 475 women and young women out of the program who have exited prostitution permanently. Um, many of the women and girls that we uh, touch upon, uh, we provide prevention education to and a whole variety of services. Long-term recovery from prostitution is a long-term process. We've reached an end. Do you have a, a, a pressing question? Good no, morning. Okay. Uh, is Autumn here still? Yes. Yes. Where is she? She's right there. Stand Where up. Stand up. <laughs> Autumn, we want to thank you and uh, Tim Sillard and Norma Hoteling uh, for your coming here today. Thank you.